in a time, there lived a man whose name is not familiar to most. But the most shocking thing about him is that he was no king, but he still came to rule the UK. He was no ordinary man, he ruled the Chinese market. Now, it was time to go on to his next big goal, the UK market. He was able to buy several enterprises in various industries throughout the UK, like retail and water, all thanks to his skilled business abilities and clever understanding. Now, get this, he became China's wealthiest man. But it was not enough for him. He needed more. But what did he do to get it? He sold off all of his holdings in China and invested everything in his UK firm. I think you have built a pretty good guess about what happened next. He rose quickly to become one of the UK's most prominent and influential business people. Asia's richest man, Li Kaxing. Richest man Li Kaxing owns a wide array of assets in China. From Li Kaxing, a Chinese billionaire, is well known in Hong Kong for his rags to riches narrative and major success as an entrepreneur. Li was born in 1928, but soon after, only 12 years later, his family was forced to escape their home in China because of the Japanese invasion. The tragedy, however, did not stop there. His father died of tuberculosis a few years after they arrived in Hong Kong, leaving Lai as the main provider for his family at the tender age of 15. Lai was forced to drop out of school so that he could financially support his family. When Lai was 22, he took up work at a plastics trade firm, where he acquired the idea to create his own plastics company. And so, he began the production of plastic flowers and worked tirelessly to guarantee that his products were of the greatest quality and appeared as close to the original as possible. With his efforts, he ultimately caught the eye of an international customer who helped him expand his firm to the United States. Lai titled his company, Xinan Kong Industries. And this is where his career, life, and everything else skyrocketed. As for Lai's entry into the world of real estate is considered, there wasn't any grand story behind it. Just a basic business tact and one decision that led him to be one of the richest men on the Asian continent. When Li's landlord decided to raise the rent, he understood that owning a building would be more profitable in the long term. So here's what he did. He bought a plot of land and constructed his factory. Such a basic step, but for Lai, this was only the beginning of his real estate ventures, which would lead to his becoming one of Hong Kong's premier private property developers and one of Asia's wealthiest individuals. Lai's company, Xi'an Kong Holdings, went public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in the year 1972. Now, Lai's primary ambition was to take over his opponent, Jardine Matheson Holding Lead, a British multinational corporation located in Hong Kong that technically had a hold over all of the city's profitable real estate investments. And so he did, with tact, with waiting, and at just the right time. When the period of rioting and protests against British colonialism was in full swing, in 1967, Lai made a move that put him on top of the real estate chain and allowed him to buy land at a cheap cost, and the rest goes as we know. Lai became Hong Kong's top private property developer. Lai was well known for his commercial skill and intellect. An incident to highlight just how that was true is when Lai was not satisfied with taking over his competition. Now, he tried to seize hostile control over Jardine Matheson holding wood. In 1984, he changed the legal residence of his firm from Hong Kong to Bermuda, an overseas British colony, to ensure that he could continue to do business freely. Lai Kaxing showed great expansion in his business activities soon after his success in the real estate market. He made this mover by joining the telecom market by acquiring Hutchison Wangpole, which possessed a great number of shares in a number of global telecom companies. Hutchison Wangpole later combined with a UK telecommunications business to establish CK Hutchison Holdings. Such an expansion strategy is what set Lai apart and helped him reach otherwise unbelievable heights. The next thing we're about to tell you is a true testament to the fact that Lai Cushing's investment portfolio included more than just real estate. He broadened his commercial activities to cover the energy and utilities sectors, investing in natural gas and power firms in many nations. This was all done as a strategic move to strengthen his position in the industry. While all of this was just the initiation of the plan, he solidified it when he founded Chung Kong Infrastructure Holdings, which not only owns, 
but also runs infrastructural assets such as water treatment plants and waste management facilities. In addition to all of this, Lai Cushing has made major investments in the sector of retail and manufacturing. His company's investments in the Watsons and As Watson Group have resulted in the said firm's operating thriving health and beauty retail outlets around the globe. This expansion of company activities demonstrates his ability to recognize viable business prospects outside of his primary sector of expertise. Lai's capabilities were not limited to basic business acumen. Risk-taking comes hand in hand with running a business. But Lai, on the other hand, was not someone who liked to sail smoothly. When need be, his decisions for the business were painful but precise. These are what helped him rule the UK business world. Despite his enormous fortune and commercial successes, Lee Cushing's charity initiatives were well acknowledged and respected. He was a strong believer in helping the community and generously donated to a variety of charity institutions, with a special emphasis on education and medical research. His contributions to these sectors have impacted innumerable individuals and communities all over the world. Lai Kaxing formed the Lai Kaxing Foundation to expand his charitable activities, which focus on supporting social advancement via education and healthcare programs. The foundation has helped several nations, notably in Asia, improve the quality of education and healthcare. Lai Kaxing announced his retirement from business in 2018 at the age of 89 leaving behind a tremendous reputation as one of Asia's most successful business people. Rightly said so, Lai was a man of good deeds and good decisions. His narrative demonstrates the value of hard effort, dedication, and clever business decisions. Although his story is one of struggle, it is also wholesome, motivational, and a wonder in itself. Even after experiencing various hurdles throughout his life, Lai Cushing's unrelenting dedication to his aims and ideals enabled him to achieve extraordinary success and have a beneficial effect on the world around him. So, that was the story about the business king of the UK, a self-made man who has served as an inspiration to many. A true rags to riches story. If you want to hear more such stories, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.